Hello, I'm Mr. Atchison and I will be your digital photography teacher for the school year 2021. Uh, it's a different kind of school year as we know. Um, some of the videos that I make for you will be coming from here, my very cluttered basement, also known as my man cave. Others I will make when I'm at school. Uh, set out for school this morning and I was on my Harley and it started pouring down raining so I decided to turn around and come home. I don't like riding in the rain and I'm going to make this video here in my basement. So what this video is going to focus on is introducing you to your camera or taking a quick tour of your digital camera. So if you don't already have one, you will need a digital camera for this class, some kind of digital camera that can be placed into a manual mode. And we'll start by talking about the mode dial here very shortly. Uh, also for this class, you will need internet access, which if you're watching this video, you have. And there's a website that we're going to be accessing and using called PhotoP. That's P-H-O-T-O-P-E-A. Uh, PhotoP is a really good online copy of a very expensive program called Photoshop, which is an Adobe product, which is what we normally teach uh, in the classroom. In the digital world, we have our digital darkroom uh, called Photoshop. It's where we can edit and change and adjust photos Back when I started on film many, many years ago, we actually had a physical dark room, which was just that. It was a dark room that you went into. Uh, light would expose the film and ruin it, so the room had to be totally dark. And we would go in there to develop our film and to make our prints. These days, uh, the things, many of the things that we could do in the dark room are done um, digitally through Photoshop. Uh, I have been using Photoshop since it first came out, uh, since it had four little tools on the toolbar. So I'm very familiar with Photoshop. I was an Adobe certified instructor uh, all the way through CS3. Uh, I kind of gave that up when I came to North because it really wasn't necessary, but uh, I know Photoshop pretty well backwards and forwards, and I know digital cameras pretty well backwards and forwards. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to cut the scene, and I'm going to take you on a little tour of your digital camera. If you don't already have a digital camera, uh, don't sweat it. You can take, uh, take a few days or a week or so to pick one up. You do not have to buy a brand new digital camera. In fact, I would highly recommend that you buy a used digital camera, either on eBay or over at um, Murphy's Camera on Bardstown Road. They have a selection of used cameras. Uh, there's also a guy, if you go on up Bardstown Road a little bit, right across from the Kentucky Fried Chicken where Baxter breaks away from Bardstown Road. Uh, There's a guy called Chuck Rubens, and Chuck has a massive, massive collection of old cameras, new cameras, and lots of good used digital cameras. Uh, just check out and get one that has a manual mode so you can operate both the shutter and the aperture. So I'm going to switch my camera angle up here real quick, and we're going to talk about and take a look at some of the features on your digital camera that you will need to know how to use right away, because we're going to start shooting right away. Okay, so here's my digital camera. It's my trusty Canon EOS 5D Mark II that I've had forever. And we're going to start by uh, talking about this thing here on the top called a mode dial. Now, let me say this. Um, I'm using Canon. These um, instructions also work for a Nikon. I've used Nikons as well. They're both fine cameras. Uh, also, you might find yourself with an Olympus. Uh, I've shot with Olympus cameras and you might also find yourself with a Pentax camera, but I'm going to keep these instructions fairly general so that you can apply them. Uh, the mode dial basically puts the camera in different modes, and these modes allow you to control different aspects of the shooting. In the Canon world, the all-automatic mode, and that's where we're going to start, is all-automatic, is a green box. When you put the camera in the green box, the camera does all the work for you as far as exposure, picking the right shutter speed, picking the right aperture, um, and picking the right ISO, and the things that you would normally control if you were in the M mode or the manual mode. We'll get to the manual mode, but for right now, we're just going to go ahead and start off shooting in the green box mode, the automatic mode, because I want you up and taking pictures. Okay, so there's that. We're going to do the manual mode. Also, there is program mode, that's P. Uh, we'll talk about that in another lesson. There's uh, TV for time value in Canon world. Uh, in uh, Nikon world, instead of TV, 
Uh, it says S for shutter. That's shutter priority, and that's what you're controlling in the time value mode. You're controlling the shutter speed. The camera controls everything else. You have AV in Canon World. That's for aperture uh, value mode. Uh, I believe in uh, Canon World, uh, not or Nikon World, not exactly sure what that is, but it's not A because in Nikon World, A is the same as your green box. A is automatic. So you should be in automatic mode for this first, this first lesson. And you want to look on the side of your lens and look for a switch that says autofocus or AF, okay, or autofocus on or off. Make sure that your autofocus is on, okay? These days, we don't have to worry so much about focusing the lens. There's times when we're going to want to do that. There's times when we're going to want to take control of this camera and focus its lens. But these days, I'm going to let you just start off in autofocus. Okay? The other control that you're going to need to be made aware of, fairly in short order, is one called ISO. And ISO stands for um, International Standards Organization. Uh, they set the standards for film speed. Back in the day when we would shoot film, we would have different speeds of film. Okay, and those speeds of film determined how light sensitive that film was. The lower the number, the less sensitive to the light the film would be. In digital world, we have ISO. It was still the same thing. It controls how sensitive the electronics in this camera are to the light that's coming in. The lower the number, the less sensitive they are. The higher the number, 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,600, the more sensitive those um, electronics in this camera are to the light. Also, the higher the number, the more noise that it picks up, the more grain and distortion that it picks up. So typically I like to try to shoot with as low an ISO number as I can possibly get away with. In the bright sunlight, I'll be shooting with 100, 200, and if I'm down in Mammoth Cave trying to take pictures in almost no light, I'll be shooting with 2400, 4800 ISO. In a basketball game, gyms, fairly poorly lighting. Um, I'm going to shoot with 800 or 1600 ISO, maybe as high as 2400. Okay, you don't need to commit that to memory right now. There will be a lesson on ISO later. We'll talk about that in detail later. But for right now, make sure you've got your autofocus turned on to autofocus and make sure you've got your camera in automatic mode. It should pick the ISO for you. When you look through the viewfinder you sh and you turn the camera on, power switch, you should see some dots or some points inside there. Okay, I have a little diamond pattern on mine because I have the older autofocus system on the Canon. And when you push your shutter button halfway down or part of the way down, not all the way so that it clicks, but just part of the way, it should activate the autofocus system. And then you should get a beep and a flash on one of those dots or one of those little squares. So look for those little squares and look for those little dots. And depending on your camera, you may only have one in the middle. You may have three side by side. If uh, you're shooting a Canon, you may have a diamond pattern, okay, that uh, has a whole bunch of them in it. And you just kind of push that button down a little bit and you wait for that beep here. I'll see if I can get it to go on the camera. There it is. Can you hear that? Okay, when you hear that beep, the focus is locked in, and then you can go ahead and push the shutter the rest of the way down and fire off a picture. Okay. Also, you should have a display screen on the back that shows you what you just shot. You should have some sort of menu button where you can get into the menu, and you should have some sort of joystick or uh, device that lets you move around inside that menu and choose the different uh, menu items. We're not quite to menu yet, but I will say this. Make sure your camera is shooting in JPEG, okay? I'm going to change my camera angles real quick, and we'll pick it back up. Okay, I'm back. Let me zoom back just a hint. There we go. You can see how cluttered and messy my man cave and my basement is. Let me get a little reflection here so you can see my face a little better. There we go. A little better lighting. Okay. We want to be shooting in JPEG mode, and here's where you might need your manual for your camera. Okay, I know it's making a little noise, so... Here's where you might use your manual. You will need access to your manual. If you don't have your paper manual, go online and go to Google, and Google's a wonderful resource for this sort of thing, and Google, how do I set my Nikon D3000 or my Canon Rebel to shoot JPEGs, JPGs. We do not want to be shooting in RAW. RAWs are very large, uncompressed files, usually used by professional photographers for things like weddings and high-end landscape photography. 
no compression at all in RAWs. We don't want to start there. We'll get there eventually in photo two, we get to RAWs. But for photo one, shooting in JPEGs is just fine. You're going to want to be shooting in JPEG, JPG mode. Okay, it's going to produce JPEG files. And you're going to want to be shooting with the highest resolution that your camera can shoot in and the finest detail that your camera can shoot in. So there are usually three settings. They put one that puts you in JPEG and then one that picks the larger of the boxes, the larger of the resolutions. And then sometimes you'll see a big set of stair steps for real rough resolution and finer stair steps on a little icon for smaller resolution. And you want to go ahead and be shooting in the highest resolution, the smallest set of stair steps, and the largest box that you can shoot in a JPEG. So your assignment is to look through the manual or to look online if you can't find your uh, actual paper manual and find out how to put your camera in JPEG mode, how to make sure your autofocus is working, okay, how to make sure you know how to use your autofocus, looking through the dial, okay, and waiting for that little dot to light up or to beep at you so that it knows I'm focused on that spot or you know it's on the camera is focused on that spot and then go ahead and fire off a picture. Also, you need to watch the video on rule of thirds because your first, very first shooting assignment is going to be to go around your house, go around your yard, go inside your house, wherever, keep your camera in auto mode and shoot something that shows me rule of thirds because that's where we're going to start with Photoshop, now switched over to Photo P, the online application. Okay, so tour your camera, make sure you've got your autofocus, you can find your autofocus points, make sure you can put the mode dial in uh, automatic mode, okay, make sure that you're shooting in JPEGs, you will, may need to reference your um, manual for that. If you have any questions, I will answer those questions when we have our online meetings this week. Okay, I'm looking forward to meeting all of you, sort of in person, as little squares on my computer screen, and I'm really looking forward to the day when we can get back together in person, face to face. Okay, so do those things for me and get started on your camera work.